Yeah, my name is Jan Stoop. I'm an associate professor in behavioral economics here at the Erasmus School of Economics. So when I came in as a, at Tilburg University as a student, I wanted to be an accountant. Uh, until I got my first class in accountancy, <laughs> then I knew that I did not want to be an accountant. But we got these other economics courses, uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics, and I loved that. So that's when I knew at least I wanted to be uh, like a, a regular economist. For a long time, I wanted to be, uh, be a professor actually. So it's been a career goal of mine for, for quite some time. And uh, yeah, it's really cool to, uh, to see things work out. My favorite spot here, actually, to be honest, is where the piano is. And I love to play music in my spare time. I do like teaching the master students most because there's more interaction. Typically, the first year students are a bit shy. When it comes to the master, this is all gone, right? People stand up and if I say something that they don't believe, then they challenge me, right? So that's, uh, I, I love that a lot, yeah. Yeah, how do I prepare for, uh, for teaching? Um, so the master class I've been given now for about 10 years, so then there's less preparation there. Although, because of COVID, things changed a lot. So for eight years or so, I would give the same story every week. But then COVID came and I videotaped everything. I'll we'll show the videotapes, but that frees up time in class to go a bit more in depth in the material. And then actually I needed to, to prepare a lot more than I used to do. But that's great, that keeps you up uh, on the top of your game, right? And then stay connected to the newest literature and whatnot. I'm trying to keep my students motivated uh, to participate in class. And I think Mentimeter is actually a nice tool to, to do that. You start your class, you ask, are there any questions that people have? And then typically no one has questions, but I don't believe that, right? It must be that people have questions. Typically when I, when I was a student, at least, I just, I didn't dare to ask a question because I thought I would be perceived as being dumb. But, but at the same time, you know that if you have a question then others will also have the same question. Yeah, for me, remote learning, I, I see a lot of possibilities. On the one hand, I like it a lot because I think I, at least for my courses, I can make it much more interactive, hoping that the students will learn more. On the other hand, of course, uh, I know that just the real life experience, being on campus, being with your, with your fellow students is also super important. So I think we need to find a way how to combine the, the, the two methods. So how do you come up with a research topic, right? That's an interesting question. Does a research question come first or does the research uh, method come first? And I think I'm a person where first, first the method and then the question. So I just like to walk around, think about, you know, seeing opportunities where um, like an interesting question, for example, misdelivering envelopes, right? It's just it's something that I see happening and then I think, hmm, how can I use this to, uh, to, to, right? to, to do research? And then for me, usually the question comes second. So my advice for students uh, who study, uh, this sounds a bit silly and maybe also survivorship bias, uh, do what you love. Uh, I know when I came in as a student at Tilburg University, I wanted to be an accountant because I've seen examples in my uh, surroundings where people were filthy rich <laughs> with becoming a, an accountant. But then I quickly found out that that was not for me. Uh, and I just followed, I took the courses that I loved, right? So for me, studying didn't feel like a burden. I just wanted to know what the books had to say. And especially when I came in touch with uh, behavioral economics and doing experiments. And the same for my research. I just, I wanna know if people fake data, right? I wanna know if people return uh, misdelivered envelopes stuffed with cash. It's just, uh, that's my passion. But I always feel a bit silly by saying that because there's a bit of sur survivorship bias, right? I, I made it this way and therefore I think that the whole world is like that. And I know that it's not always like that. But yeah, it's the best I can, best advice I can give still.